Yeah, so today um, I thought I'd give a, um, an overview of um, the SEO tools that are actually worth um, looking at within your SEO campaign. Ooh. So these are the kind of articles that, as SEOs, we, um, we have to combat on a daily basis. So nine SEO secrets every business needs to know. SEO secrets 2016. This is a kind of clickbait which makes um, our jobs a little bit harder and keeping on top of the best SEO tools that are available in the industry. Um, so it makes it difficult for us to understand where we want to assign our digital marketing budgets. And uh, a lot of them are very expensive to sign up to. So um, what I'm going to present to you today is um, um, look at a different angle. So what are the best SEO tools in the market that we use our email on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, that help within the four sort of key areas um, within your SEO campaign, so gaps in content, page speeds, um, using a, a code search tool, and maintaining a clean backlink profile, which is becoming increasingly important. So um, just starting with finding gaps in your content, um, there's a plethora of really, really good um, keyword research tools that you can use. So your most obvious one's keyword, Google Keyword Planner. You have keywordtool.io, ubersuggest.io as well. These are all fantastic tools for getting keyword data for your own website, but if you want to take it to the next level and find out what your competitors are going after, there's only a couple of tools on the market that really, really stand out. One of them being SEM Rush. Um, provides the most value, value in analyzing competitor data quickly. Um, so what I'm going to show you is a, um, a quick process of how you can see what kind of keywords um, your competitors are going after, after. And this process only takes a couple of hours to do. So. Um, I'm going to use homebase.co.uk as an example. Um, so you can see point one in the corner, sorry, at the top, we've got homebase. Um, all you have to do in SEM Rush is enter your domain and you get a wealth of information. So you've got the number of keywords that they rank for, um, how much, well, an estimate of the organic traffic that those keywords are driving. So you can see it's 6.9 million there. Um, and you can look at your competitors. So you've, in the bottom of the screen here, you've got diy.com, probably can't see that, uh, wix.co.uk. Ikea Argos. It's a very, very quick overview of <coughs> who your key competitors are. Um, and the most uh, interesting columns in, in that data set there is uh, the common keywords and search engine keywords. So common keywords, obviously, the keywords that you rank for, as well as your competitors. Search engine keywords are all of the keywords your competitors rank for, and the ones that are actually driving organic traffic. Um, so the next step um, would be to create a generate a keyword list. So Generate a keyword list in SEM Rush is very, very simple. And what we want to do here, essentially, is um, get a, all the keywords that Homebase are ranking for, Wix, DIY, Argos, whatever keywords they're ranking for, put them into one list. And then ultimately, what we'll go through is seeing where um, those, where you and your competitors rank against those keywords. Um, so in, in SEM Rush, it's very quick, quick and easy to do. So you run an organic research report, um, look at the top brand queries, and just filter out all your brand terms so you get a non, very, very quick overview of what your non-brand keywords are. Um, and then we can start formulating a, a spreadsheet, uh, which enables you to quickly find the gaps in the content. So at this stage, what you're looking at in your, in your spreadsheet, in your keyword research spreadsheet, is you have your competitors on the right, so you've got home base, DIY, Wix, and then the list of, all the list of keywords in, in, the, front, in the front tab. Um, some basic Excel skills involved here, so using the VLOOKUP to pulling all the keywords and all the tabs, getting all the keyword data as well, the search volume data. And ultimately, what your data will look like, this on the right-hand side of the, of, the, of the graph, so you have your keywords, your search volume, and the positions in which your competitors rank against yourselves. So we can see, we can see here that B and Q, the middle, the middle column there, they rank for everything um, on, at very, very top level, top level view. Whereas um, any, any area where there's uh, no value in a cell, that's where, you, that's where you're lacking the content. So, the top keyword there in this particular list is BTU calculator, which is not the most interesting uh, subject, but it's essentially, um, it's a, if you want to buy a radiator, it's what kind of power is required to uh, buy a radiator. Um, you'd be surprised that it actually generates a fairly decent amount of uh, search volume and a very quick and easy tool that BNQ knocked up, ranks position one, and it's got 15 referring subnets already. So uh, not a massive amount, but it's good links. Um, and that's obviously some, something that if, you have home base for, as, a, as a client, for example, you would go off and recommend, OK, you perhaps we need to build some content around, around BTU calculators and so on and so forth. Um, if you want to take it to the next step, then 
you could assign a category to each keyword and then sum up the search volume so you could look at a more category level basis rather than just keyword level. So, for example, paints, obviously quite a popular, popular keyword uh, category. So you could categorize all the paint keywords into the paint category, sum up the search volumes, and that will be your total traffic opportunity available. Um, next, let's talk about page speed. And page speed is becoming a really, really important part of technical SEO. A lot of the Google updates over the years have been focused around speed, not only from an SEO perspective, but from a UX perspective as well. So it's certainly a, a marrying of the two disciplines and when it comes down to page speed. Um, so a lot of the updates have been around uh, mobile, load time, or crawl budgets. And as SEOs, it's our job to maximize each of those, um, each of those areas uh, the best we can. Um, just to give an example, um, on the right hand side, I've got a tool called Pingdom Tools. Um, the yellow block in the first line is actually how long it takes for their server to um, respond. So you're waiting seven seconds for their server to respond. Um, in organic, in, um, in SEO, that's obviously quite a long, long time. A lot of the pages, a lot of the uh, sites that rank within the first page of Google load complete, load fully within a couple of seconds. So um, if you run your standard site crawler on, that, on this particular website, um, such as Screaming Frog or IS, SEO, SEO Toolkit crawler, a lot of the time you'll just see timeout. You won't get any data for this particular website. And if the crawlers are seeing that, then Google's probably seeing that as well. So it's really important to have a um, really, really quick server response time for your website. Um, it sort of leads into um, a very recent announcement um, that Google made with regards to the AMP project. Is anyone aware of the AMP project? Cool. <laughs> Cheers, Rob. Um, so the AMP project is essentially um, it allows web, uh, webmasters and developers to mark up their pages using a stripped down version of uh, HTML called AMP, AMP HTML. So no JavaScript or anything like that. It's just very, very basic HTML. What happens when Google, when Google crawls the website is they'll um, cache um, your, your copy of the web page, but also store it on their servers as well as your servers, obviously. So from a UX point of view, when someone lands on a, um, a top story page, such as that, the Morrissey considering London Mail, Mail bid, um, and you click on that, you get an interface which is akin to the one on the right, so you can just very quickly swipe left and right. Um, so it's really good from a user experience point of view, but um, from an SEO perspective, you know, you can mark up your pages, and um, the question really is, should you build a, an AMP website? Is it worth your time? So at the moment, it's probably not quite ready for whole site-wide site -wide rollout. It's only specific to top stories, so within the news publication sector, yeah, you would probably consider it. Um, as well as if you're in like, sports news, that kind of vertical, then yeah, we, we'd probably recommend um, um, optimizing your, your HTML pages for um, AMP. But at the moment, it's, not, it's only for top stories, but Google have come out and said that you know, they are going to roll it out into all other search components. Um, so we think personally that it makes sense for Google to target local search results next. Um, as well as AdWords landing pages. Um, so going back to the key page speeds um, tools um, available on the internet, there's loads of them available. Um, however, I've picked out four that are really, really good and we use on a daily basis, going from the most basic to um, more advanced tools. So page speed insights is um, a very, very good tool to um, pick out what kind of assets on your website you can optimize properly. Um, it doesn't actually measure how quickly your page loads, so it won't give you a, you know, this page loads in seven or eight seconds, but it will give you a breakdown of all the assets on your web page that you can, you can optimize, and whether that's compressing images, combining CSS, those kind of things. And it compares desktop and mobile um, automatically, which is really, really handy. Um, so coming down a little bit more advanced is Pingdom Tools. Um, it provides the fastest overview of the number of requests per page, so you get information such as time to first byte, full page loads, and the number of requests that um, the crawler is making when it accesses your website. You can also choose up to six locations as well, so um, it's a very quick way to see if your site does have a GOIP redirect um, implemented, which um, is obviously not, not a good thing for SEO. And the next tool which we use very frequently is uh, GT Metrics. Um, GT Metrics is really handy because uh, there's a lot more technical features, such as you, know, you can change the connection speed, so for example, if um, your uh, if, you if your target market is in a country which has slower broadband speeds, then you can change your broadband speeds to replicate that, that particular country. You can also compare four sites side by side. Um, 
and it takes in multiple metrics, such as not only their own proprietary page speed score, but also uh, YSLO, which is Yahoo's, um, Yahoo's metric they use. Um, the next one is web page tests, which is the most advanced one on, on the internet right now. It's completely free, which is really good. Um, and it covers most locations around the world. So um, also, you, you can combine the locations with emulating mobile browsers, so you can see how fast your website loads within a mobile browser. Change user agent connection, again, connection speeds, browser version. You can go, you can do so much things with it. It's, it's a really, really good tool. Um, and also, what it does that the other tools don't do is uh, it checks site performance um, on first view and repeat view. So that's really important um, because 99% of the time, Google will only come back to, well, it'll only, Google doesn't call, um, sorry, Google doesn't support cookies. So um, most of the time, Google will crawl and it will see the first view performance. And your first view performance <coughs> might be significantly longer than your second view performance. So it's quite an important metric to, to keep an eye on. And also, you can export video comparisons as well. So um, it's up to it's not sites, it's up to as many sites as you like. Um, so you can actually see how your site performs against other websites in real time. Um, so key do's and don'ts when it comes to, um, when it comes to page speed. Um, <coughs> these are some of the most frequent issues we come across. So um, expiry date on assets, for example. So when I talk about static assets, I'm talking about JavaScript, CSS, uh, images. Um, a, lot of, a lot of clients don't actually put expiry dates on those, asset, on those assets. So when you come to call it as a user, your client browser doesn't actually store that image or that asset um, in its browser. So it's making requests to the server all the time, and the user, it gets very slow, and it affects the user experience in SEO as well. Um, another thing we often see is um, clients rendering all of their content within JavaScript. So it's a bit of a sticking point in SEO. Um, Google claim they're getting generally very good at crawling JavaScript. However, um, some of the clients that we have, they've implemented full single page applications, um, and it's, it's, yeah, the Google can't see, see the page, basically. So um, you can render all your content in JavaScript, but you need to use what we call a fragment page. And a fragment page is a, basically a HTML snapshot of your fully rendered page that Google can access if it can't, see your, if it can't render your JavaScript content. Um, and yeah, some pretty obvious do's. Um, always minimize the number of requests down as much as possible. Uh, combining all your assets into as few, few files as possible just gives Google less legwork to do, and it gets the, the core content quicker, which is obviously a HTML. Um, so using code search, one tool that um, is probably not that used that much in industry is nerdydata.com. Um, Nerdy data, we find really useful. Um, basically, what Nerdy data does is it scrapes and crawls the first page of millions and millions of websites. Um, and you can pull out loads of interesting data. So um, not only does it quote, well, it crawls the HTML and stores all the HTML, so you can query it very quickly. So I've just put together some uses of how within your day-to-day -day SEO work. So for example, citation conversion. Um, so for example, if you have a client who isn't, is being mentioned on a website, but it's not being linked, um, it's an opportunity for you to go out and use your nerdy data and put in, you know, href equals your client, um, exclude that term, but include the domain name. So it gives you an idea of um, websites that mention you but aren't linking, and then you can reach out to those kind of websites and say, hey, can I, you know, you're mentioning me, can we build a relationship, can we have a link ultimately? Um, and also, it's pretty useful for competitor citation as well. So, do a very, very similar exercise. So, um, you can type in your competitor, so href equals and your competitor, and then um, you can build a list of all the, all the links that your competitors are getting, but don't mention your, your domain name. Um, it's pretty, pretty powerful in that respect. Um, another, another example of how useful it can be is identifying out-of-date software, or software which could be hackable. So obviously, WordPress is one of the most hacked websites, um, hacked CMSs in the, in the world. Um, so you could, the example here is obviously, if your, we can do a code search, code search on content equals WordPress 3, which is obviously the old version of WordPress, I think we're on 4 now. Um, and it's 39,000 39, websites um, that have the old version of WordPress, which is obviously very hackable. So again, it's another opportunity to start building relationships with um, relevant websites and reaching out to them. You might get a thank you, best case scenario, they might mention you in a tweet or a blog post. Um, another thing for more of the black hat side of SEO is finding the content and finding code and content thieves, so you know, duplicate websites, people who scrape your content. Um, you can just put in common 
um, come in the code into the into Node data and find um, people who are copying your content. Um, it's also pretty useful for identifying pri uh, private blog networks as well. So looking at common footprints um, such as theme similarities, Google Analytics codes, AdSense codes, common tags, um, anchor footprints. Um, it's really, really useful finding yeah, uh, PBNs, which are obviously not good for your campaign. And lastly, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, maintaining a clean backlink profile. Over the years, Google's become pretty, um, pretty clear that it doesn't want you getting really bad quality links, whether that's from directories, private blog networks, um, social bookmarks, that kind of thing. Um, so I want to talk about how we do some analysis um, at our email. So uh, we use a multitude of tools. Um, so the Moz Site Explorer, Ahrefs Majestic, as well as Rome proprietary data. Um, so quite often we get a question from clients, which one, which tool should I invest in? Which tool is the best? There's no right answer to this. They're all very, very good tools in their own respect. And um, we obviously recommend, well, if you've got the money, if you've got the budget, go and get all three tools. Um, each one of them crawls different parts of the internet. So uh, it would be folly to just focus on one, one tool for all your backlink campaigns. Um, so in order to do the initial backlink order on your website, it's quite a complex um, process we use um, our EMA, but ultimately what we want to see is, what we want to target is the really, really low quality links first. So that's sites that have low domain authority, uh, site-wide links, commercial anchor text, all on the same C-class block. Um, those, are the those are the sites that we want to identify very, very quickly and remove them from our backlink profile. Um, so what we do is essentially merge all the data sources together pass the C-class IP address, categorize the anchor text. So, for example, if you've got homebase.co.uk, that would be a brand anchor. If you've got um, a home base pot plants, that would be a brand plus commercial sort of anchor. Um, we classify the links in that kind of way and, uh, yeah, and put it into a pivot table. And you can do all sorts of fun with pivot tables, obviously. Um, so this is an example where we had a client who could have been attacked and could have had a neg negative SEO attack from a could be a competitor or someone who's looking to make a little bit of money. So the purple box that is highlighted in there is um, seven, seven months worth of link data. And we can see the numbers are a little bit skewed, i.e. Um, in February 2016, we had 414 links coming into the website, whereas six months prior to that, we only had 79. So thinking to ourselves, well, hang on a sec, that seems like an artificial number of links coming into the website. So we did a little bit dig digging around. Um, sorted the links and domains by C-class IP, and what we found were these network of sites um, linking, to our, linking to our client. So they're all exactly the same template, just different, different domains, and all of them had the same messaging at the bottom, so um, give me $5 a link and I'll remove it. So that was linking 406 times from that one network, which obviously is well, it's two, around $2,000 to remove all these links. Um, we always recommend to clients never ever pay anyone to remove a link. Just put it into a disavow file. Um, there's been instances, instances before where a client has come back to us and said, well, I've just paid $20 um, per link to remove all these links. And what happened was, yeah, the link was removed, but within a month, the, um, the spammer had created another network linking with, using the same anchor text, um, same looking website. So it just fuels um, their commercial activity. And um, that's, um, so yeah, this sort of covers the initial order kind of things, but it's really, really important that um, keeping an eye on your link profile is, on, is an ongoing basis. So Majestic and Ahrefs have um, two really good features, which is um, new links, and on the, so that's Ahrefs at the top, Majestic at the bottom. And uh, you can see on a daily basis what new links are coming into your website. Um, so link, previously, link pro, cleaning up your link profile was very much a reactive part of SEO, as you know, as Google has released more and more Penguin updates. It's now become very much a proactive part of SEA. Um, yeah, it shouldn't really be ignored. Um, and finally, I'd like to announce, where's my hype man? There he is. <laughs> um, so we're, we've launched a new tool today, um, which is for Chrome. So you guys might know uh, Redirect Path, which is um, a status header checker, and also uh, Ioma Pulse, which measures um, uh, volatility within uh, key verticals on the internet. Um, so we've got a, a new tool called Page Insights. Um. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, 
that was awkward. Um, so yeah, page insights, which is essentially um, highlights all your key issues on your on your uh, web page. So it's a Chrome extension. It highlights uh, critical issues, the warning issues, um, the mid yellow, amber um, color there is the notices and page info. So it basically gives a nice overview of all your key issues that are wrong with your website. So missing uh, canonical tags, missing meta descriptions, title tags, multiple nofollows, and so on and so forth. And more recently, we've added pagination as well. Um, and another feature, which is uh, pretty cool, is it can connect to Google Search Console. So this is an idea of Ben's. Where's Ben? There he is. So Ben is one of our US, um, uh, he's the director of analytics in the New York office. He came up with this idea a couple of weeks ago. And basically, um, you can, as long as you're logged into your Google Search Console profile, um, you can link up your um, Page Insights plugin, and it will automatically pull through all the click data, impression data, uh, and average position data straight into, you, into um, Page Insights. Um, it's worth pointing out this is all 100% client side, so we don't collect any data from this. It all takes place in the browser. Um, Rob, do you want to give a, do you want to give a demo? Yeah. So yeah, this particular page, this is your website, Rob. It's got loads, it's got loads of issues. Um, so yeah, I've got notes, some images were not found to have an alt attribute. So you just drop down and close that. Um, and these are, the green notices are more like, okay, these are the, this is the information that we can extract from the page. So page title, description, robots, canonical. It also extracts um, schema markup. So if uh, your schema is not formatted properly, it will highlight it. Or if there's a, a tag that's not closed, it will highlight that kind of thing as well. And yeah, it's got the status, um, uh, the header response code, uh, sorry, the header response status as well, which is also available in Redirect Path. And yeah, moving on to Search Console. Um, so you see Rob does very well for Mary Berry Cupcakes. It's a keyword he's been after for years. Um, and he's got, yeah, click data, impression data, click through rate, average position. Uh, it's all organic data. So yeah. No pressure. Um, so yeah, you can download that now. Uh, just hit that hyperlink in the in the bottom right, and um, yeah, that's it.